five of the overpasses built along the Red Line Corridor is now open to traffic. The commissioning of the motion flyover brings to five the number of bridges built and completed by the Sahuolus administration to create new connectivities along the Lagos Rail Mass Transit Red Line, which spans 37 kilometers from Agbadu to Onyibu. So elated, Governor Sawonlu described the opening of the motion flyover as another fulfillment of his administration's promise to the residents. He noted that the flyover would bring relief to the issue of congestion experienced in the area. Welcome. This is the Greater Lagos Vision, and I am your host, Love Oyedukun. On this episode, Sawon Lu was foreign investors at LCCI conference assures of conducive environment. Sawon Lu opens last red line flyover in motion. Plus, healthcare, Lagos ship sets sail, promises enhanced patient care and efficiency. Details of these and many more when we return. Please stay with us. This is Lagos, the heartbeat of Nigeria, a city steeped in rich cultural heritage and now poised to become a global financial center. Well, a lot may us show, and it's an opportunity for us to just depict what Lagos is all about. And it's only at the event like this, competing with other bigger cities and other nations, that you can get to tell your story. So it's storytelling time for us. In a historic moment, Lagos made its inaugural appearance at the renowned Lord Mayor Show in London, a testament to its growing economic prominence. Lagos is a big mega city on its own right now. It's the largest city in Africa. It's the biggest economy that is a sub-national in Africa. But we want to make it one of the international financial centers in the world. All we're trying to do is to be able to let the world know that Lagos is indeed ready for bigger business. Lagos isn't just open for business. It's a gateway to the future, embracing innovation and welcoming investors from around the globe. We invite the world to witness Lagos' dynamism, progress, and the myriad of opportunities available for transformative, groundbreaking projects. Lagos is a bit ready to take over the world in the financial space, you know, in the economic space, and to truly, really be able to tell both the Lagos, the Nigerian, and the African story, and be able to let other parts of the world know who we are, understand our culture, understand that we are the center of culture, entertainment, music, in the whole of Africa, and to also be able to, for people to know um, what we have to give to the world. So the whole idea, right, is for us to be able to let the world, get them to know what is happening in Lagos. But GDP of Lagos is actually bigger than GDP of Kenya, it's bigger than Ghana, it's bigger than Rwanda, and it's bigger than Senegal. As a little sub-national, it's very big in how it stands, in how it sits, and it's all of that conversation that we think a lot of people need to know what is happening in Lagos, you know, and how we can use the Lagos story, you know, to sort of like tell the African story. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has reassured investors that both the state and federal government will continue to create a business-friendly environment for them to thrive. So I want to spoke as a chief host at the International Business Conference and Expo 2024, organized by the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI. The LCCI International Business Conference and Expo is an annual business event held in collaboration with Lagos State Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment. The conference could best be described as a convergence of global business leaders, government officials and industry experts. As the largest business gathering in Nigeria, 
The 2024 LCCI International Business Conference and Expo is expected to play a crucial role in driving economic growth, attracting foreign investment and fostering innovation within the Nigerian economy. The president of LCCI, Gabriel Idahosa, highlighted more on the theme, Invest Nigeria. Nigeria is strategically positioned by the size of the economy, the population, and central location as a gateway to the African markets. The African continental free trade agreement presents a unique opportunity to strengthen our trade ties with our neighbors and position Africa as a critical player in the global economy. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sogunlu expressed commitment of governments in ensuring business-friendly environment for investors to thrive. Lagos cannot do it alone. We want this investment to be reflective in almost all parts of our country because the country is large and is big. But we can be a sounding board. We want to open our doors to be able to use us as you know, a test case so that investment and, and, and businesses can come to the country and can do well. We want to be able to ensure that the country is safe, you know, and, and the country is consistently, you know, positively positioned to be able to receive foreign direct investment that each and every of these um, country heads that are sitting here can go back, you know, and, and bring, you know, um, back from their country. He also spoke on measures put in place by his administration to encourage ease of doing business. Vocational training and skills development is one of the things we want to partner with VDMA, which is a German known vocational institute. And we also want to ensure that all of the technology that they have been able to do and pass on, that we can keep it and we can run it you know, in, in, in Lagos. Um, I can continue in each and every one because all of them I'm excited because each and every of our ambassadors have spoken very, very well you know, about their technology. I've had the opportunity to go to Israel myself, and I know that part of the things that Israel do very well is agriculture. You know, the cobalt and, and, and the, the technology they had brought about using a small country to be able to define and improve you know, outputs on per hectare yield on agriculture. And we're also exploring such opportunity. And so for us as a government, we'll continue to create and ensure that business-friendly environment in Lagos is not just a talk shop, it's something that will be intentional and will be deliberate about. We'll continue to keep our doors open to all interested investors and partners. We therefore invite you to take advantage of the opportunity that is bound in our country, that is bound in Lagos, and to create real partners that will build a prosperous future, not only for Lagos, but for our country. I want to, once again, say that we're truly excited with the intentions and the plan of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I want to thank um, the chairman and um, the current president, Mr. Daosa, for keeping faith with this on a year-on-year -year basis. Um, Lagos, like the name sounds, will continue to partner with you. We'll continue to ensure that we can use our government as a diving board, as a springboard with other parts of the country. Speaking in the same vein, the Minister of Marine and Blue Economy, Boyega, Uyitola noted that in order to attract investors, the federal government has given incentives such as exceptions from customs duty to would-be investors so as to promote industrial development. Nigeria's strategic location and abundant resources present fast investment opportunities, particularly in the marine and blue economy sector. Despite the existing challenges, the government is committed to creating an enabling environment that fosters economic growth and attracts significant investment. Today, I will highlight some of the government incentives designed to drive investment in the marine and blue economy sector. 
The Nigeria Export Processing Zones Authority oversees free trade zones and export processing zones, offering attractive benefits such as exceptions from custom duties, VAT, and corporate taxes. These zones are specifically designed to attract foreign investment, promote export-oriented businesses, and catalyze the industrial development. Nigeria's commitment to the African continental trade area, AFTA, has created new export opportunities for the marine sector. Under the Guided Trade Initiative, Nigeria has already commenced shipment, paving the way for increased trade flows across Africa. The Federal Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy, through the Nigerian Port Authority, has also licensed several export processing terminals, which have tracked export procedures and enhanced the efficiency of trade processes under the African Continental Free Trade after. Infrastructure support, public-private partnerships are vital in Nigeria's infrastructure development strategy, providing opportunities for investors to participate in projects such as roads, ports, and power generation. The Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission regulates these PPPs, ensuring that investors have clear and transparent frameworks within which to operate. Also speaking, the State Commissioner for Commerce, Cooperative, Trade and Investment said that the ministry has a mandate to attract investors to Lagos. She assures investors that Lagos is open for business. This year's conference was no doubt a landmark event with many unicorn companies introduced to the Nigerian economy. The Lagos State Smart Health Information Platform, SHIP, a partnership focused on data utilization aims to harness the capabilities of electronic records, improve the delivery of healthcare services, enable patients to assume greater control over their health, and promote collaboration among various stakeholders. The Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, made this known during the pre-launch of the Legal Smart Health Information Platform, Stakeholders Forum, and Media Engagement. Professor Abayomi highlighted the significant impact that data-driven healthcare solutions can have on transforming the healthcare landscape. The phase one of the ship will create an interconnectivity between all our general hospitals and our primary healthcare facilities alongside with the Ministry of Health and any other public health facility and uh, medical agency uh, in a manner in which all of them will be interconnected. The idea around this is to create a platform of information exchange where as data is gathered uh, at the patient interface, as a patient enters into the health ecosystem, the public health ecosystem, at that very point of entry, we already start to collect data. And as the patient moves through the process of their health uh, managed care, uh, we are gathering data at every point. Special advisor at the Lagos State Ministry of Health, Olukemi Oguyemi, said that the initiative represents a sophisticated, patient-centered health information system that leverages technology to assess operations, thereby facilitating informed decision-making aimed at enhancing patients' interactions with healthcare professionals. SHIP is going to allow us to be more patient-focused. We are patient-focused, but it just gives us that extra um, um, not only incentive, but that extra step to be patient focused. Patient focused, me saying that means our care will be individualized and it will meet, it will give us better outcomes for patients. So on the um, supply side, SHIP gives us a chance to, to improve the quality of care we give. 
SHIP allows all the healthcare professionals to be able to work at their best. The managing partners firmly believed that this initiative will empower the state government to transform the healthcare system. SHIP will be exposing a number of application programming interfaces, the core APIs, through which uh, data will be shared. When SHIP is ready to launch, which we hope to have in another six months, uh, we will have delivered a number of API services. I'll mention a few of these services. One is the um, patient demography service. This patient demography service allows us to uniquely identify and index every patient that presents at our health facilities. Had that experience in um, financial um, dealings, and we hope to replicate that in health, you know, whereby we create you know, a mechanism where uh, information is um, moved seamlessly you know, between all the individual players, you know, and therefore uh, the state will then benefit from this, and this will then translate into a uh, better outcome you know, for patient care. The Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawonlu has reaffirmed his administration's dedication to cultivating collaborations with essential stakeholders to promote initiatives aimed at enhancing the agricultural sector, minimizing waste, and guaranteeing that all residents of Lagos have access to nutritious food. So I will at this at the 11th annual summit of the Association of Lagos State Retired Heads of Service and Permanent Secretaries. The Association of Lagos State Retired Heads of Service and Permanent Secretaries, ALAHOPS, concludes two days of intensive discussions and deliberations. This 11th edition featured six speakers, eight discussions, and four plenary sessions, all focused on the theme of Agenda for Sustainable Development and Food Security in Lagos State. The experienced public servants engaged in meaningful dialogue, working to find lasting solutions to the current challenges around sustainable development and food security. All over the world, there are crises, disasters, both family and natural, that are threatening the availability and sustainability of food supply. This informed our choice of topic this year to take a greater look at issues surrounding sustainability of food supply. Topic is very apt, you know, given the um, uh, situation we're in now. It's not only in Nigeria, it's all over the world. And, uh, you know, the topic was agenda for sustainable development and food security. And we know that, yes, there's need for us to, to assist government because we know government can't do it alone. Deputy Governor Dr. Obafemi Hamzat represented Governor Babayide Sawulu at the event. In his remarks, Sawulu highlighted his administration's initiatives and expressed confidence that a summit would chart a course of sustainable solutions to address the ongoing food crisis. Then the top is strategic food processing, storage, and logistic capacity. So if we go now to that same level, we are building a logistic hub that sits on two hours. Two, two, or two hundred hectares of land. And the idea is this we should be able to store food that will feed us for nine months. Let us even assume the world is coming to an end. And I'm not here all along, then I get part of So it's an assumption that let us say that we cannot produce anything. So, everyone are you for So that, can we even feed before we are able to? So, six to nine months. Then the second one is, you know we kill a lot of cows and cattle that come from our country. We have veterinary doctors as a material. So what they do today is they check the cows, 
if they are not good with the stuff. But we are saying that we should, we should be able to process it in such a way that if a head of cow has some disease, we should be able to say, ah, okay, we are not taking the game from this state because we are able to track this disease to this particular area and therefore we stop bringing it and then they are, we can help them to correct the, the whatever challenge. The state's head of service, Olabode Aguru emphasized the importance of improving agricultural productivity, reducing food waste, and ensuring affordable access to nutritious food for the most vulnerable populations. Sustainable development and food security are cornerstones to the well-being of our community. However, it is important to note that the adoption of sustainable practices in agriculture and other sectors requires initiatives, approach, efficient resource management and a commitment to environmental stewardship. In essence, it makes it essential to meet the present to, to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In Lagos State, achieving food security involves addressing multiple dimensions, including food availability, access, utilization and stability. It necessitates improving agricultural productivity, reducing food waste, and enhancing supply chain efficiency, and ensuring that the most vulnerable population is accessible to affordable and nutritious food. In his keynote address, Dr. Adetunji of the World Bank urged the government to shift its focus towards driving an integrated food systems agenda. That is things that we can do now and have impact also. But our inability to attain sustainable food security in Nigeria, I don't mean in Lagos, but in Nigeria, no. is not as a result of lack of resources. <coughs> that is human, material, and uh, maybe... Uh, to increase productivity and ensure food security, policy leadership in agriculture and food security has to be pillar in partnership with the Commission is working on incorporating local fabricators into the agri sector to promote fabrication of local tools. This is a bottom-up approach to eradicate the bottleneck and gaps, inhibiting the adoption and utilization of mechanized implements among the farmers. Furthermore, work is in progress with one of our partners on leveraging geographical information systems, GIS technology, to achieve food security in South West. The two-day conference concluded with a communique outlining all recommendations for addressing the current food crisis. This is Lagos, the heartbeat of Nigeria, a city steeped in rich cultural heritage and now poised to become a global financial center. Well, a lot may us show, and it's an opportunity for us to just depict what Lagos is all about. And it's only at the event like this, competing with other bigger cities and other nations, that you can get to tell your story. So it's storytelling time for us. In a historic moment, Lagos made its inaugural appearance at the renowned Lord Mayor Show in London, a testament to its growing economic prominence. Lagos is a big mega city on its own right now. It's the largest city in Africa. It's the biggest economy that is a sub-national in Africa. We want to make it one of the international financial centers in the world. All we're trying to do is to be able to let the world know that Lagos is indeed ready for bigger business. Lagos isn't just open for business. It's a gateway to the future, embracing innovation and welcoming investors from around the globe. We invite the world to witness Lagos's dynamism, progress, and the myriad of opportunities available for transformative, groundbreaking projects. Lagos is indeed ready to take over the world in the financial space, you know, in the economic space, and to truly, really be able to tell both the Lagos, the Nigerian, and the African story, and be able to let other parts of the world know who we are, understand our culture, understand that we are the center of culture, entertainment, music, in the whole of Africa, and to also be able to, for to know um, what we have to give to the world. So you want
whole idea right is for us to be able to let the world get them to know what is happening in lagos but gdp of lagos is actually bigger than the gdp of kenya it's bigger than ghana it's bigger than rwanda and it's bigger than senegal as a little sub-national it's very big in how it stands in how it sits and it's all of that conversation that we think a lot of people need to know what is happening in lagos you know and how we can use the lagos story you know to sort of like tell the african story that's all we have for you on this episode of the greater lagos vision on plus tv africa i'm lovey kuku Oye Bye for now.